so in last session we have seen right so we created this uh, folders logically and with the help of these folders we achieved fragmentation right okay. now let me go back for for understanding point of view i did this so this was our security scheme and the issue got resolved we have simplified this data type right it was a little complex so i removed all the complexity and keep it very simple so data type the account data is nothing but a object where we have this different properties and if you if you remember if you don't pass anything type or required for for a property it is string, string you can see yeah, and required yeah. required is equal to true okay but yeah. always add that information to make it more so readable, it may be readable. Yeah. right so best practice is even if the default things are there you should go ahead and add it okay now now what we are going to do is i don't want to keep this account data type inside my api specification i want to keep it outside okay outside and i want to make it a global global data type how we can do that so you want to uh, create a global data type right? yes so if you go to the design center now back okay, okay. So what I'll do is I'll go to design center and I say, boss, I want fragment. Okay. okay. The APS specification we already see. Now okay. I say, give me a new fragment. Okay. I'll go ahead and I'll say, okay, you give a name over here. Okay. So what type, what type of fragment you want to create? Now, if you look at the options here, we have resource type option. We have library. We have data type. We have user documentation, example, annotations. We are going to create data type. Okay. And I'll give a name, account, data type. Okay. No space. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Account, data type. Now, whatever definition we have passed inside our EP specification, same definition we pass it here. So let me open that. Okay. Let's open it. And it looks like this. I have already copied. So if you see, this is the same thing, right? So we can go ahead and we can keep on adding this for for more readability. It's not needed, but for readability point of view. Clear? See now, right? Yes. Now, this is my data type, which I wanted to keep it globally so that all other AP specification in my bank project should refer this so that I can keep one copy of my data structure. This is actually data structure. I'm saying that this is how the field name should be. Field are nothing but a properties here. Clear? Now, what I'll do, I publish it. So let's go ahead and publish it. Whenever you want to publish any asset, any entity, we need to pass a coordinates. Coordinates are nothing but your asset version. Okay. Your, your, uh, your business group ID from which business group you are actually publishing it. So we have right. only one business group. So that ID, your asset ID and your asset version. These three are nothing but a coordinates of any asset in exchange. Okay. Now, whenever you publish something, yes, this is mandatory. You need to pass that. And generally, we start with 1.0.0. Okay. Yep. Now, whatever asset you are publishing, you need to tell, okay, whether it's in stable stage or it's in development stage, any asset. Okay. You need to tell that. So what do you mean by this? Stable means it's ready for consume. Okay. Okay. Development ready means it's not ready for consume. It's, it's still there in the development. Okay. Got it. Right. So we'll be, so we know that this is a stable stage. It's ready for reuse. Okay. So we'll go ahead and publish it. Hope this is clear. Your asset version yes. plus business group ID plus asset ID asset becomes ID. a coordinate of and the combination of this. So group ID dot asset ID dot version 
it becomes a unique ID for any asset in exchange. You cannot have with this three coordinate, you cannot have any other asset other than this. Always one right. asset will be represented by this combination. Mm -hmm. Clear? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's publish it. Okay. Now, once we publish this, we'll refer this in our API specification. So we have seen both types of fragmentation. Okay. We can keep the stuff within our API specification project, or we can keep it globally. So in future, if somebody is creating API specification, they will start referring from here. Okay. Let me close. If you go to exchange, you'll be able to see here. Okay. So now if you see here, this is a fragment. Okay. And few things I wanted to show you here. Fragment, you cannot share publicly. There is no option to share it publicly. Okay. We'll talk about it that later, but I wanted to show the screen. You don't have option to share it publicly. You only have option to share it within your organization. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can download it. You can add versions. You can see a lot of metadata is getting you know, pushed from your design center to your exchange. These all are metadata, right? Version, your, uh, uh, whether it's stable or not, okay, whether it's in development or we deprecated it, all this information comes over here. Now we can go ahead and add tags for this. Say that this is belongs to, uh, you know, bank, right? We can say, okay, this is fragment. We can add multiple tags. Yes. So this tags will help you to search this uh, asset in exchange. By mm -hmm. these tags, by the categories, you can go ahead and create this. So the categories will also help you. The tags will also help you when you're applying API governance. Okay. So we are not going to apply API governance on, on data types or fragments. We are going to apply API fragments on API specification. Okay. Okay. This is clear? Yes. Okay. So if you, there won't be any, any endpoints for this, so simply a data type. Okay. Okay. So now let's close this. Let's go back to a design center. Now what we'll do, we'll first remove that reference, local reference. So now see, we are able to see now two things, API fragment, API specification. We'll go back to API specification now. Okay, so first step, go ahead and delete it from here. Okay, we'll delete this. Delete it. The moment I delete it, it will throw error. Okay. So I yes. Know. Yeah. So it's not there now. Now how how to add that or how to refer it? Okay. So there is an option to add dependencies. Go ahead. What we are going to add right now, we are not going to add rule set. We are going to add fragments. Right. We'll talk about rule set in a moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and search for our organization. Any organization is given. We'll go ahead and search for our organization, right? See from our organization, I have only published right now one asset. Go ahead, select it, add as a dependency. Okay, so the moment I add dependency, which file will get up, uh, updated? My exchange.json file will get updated. See here, with this group ID, with this asset ID, and with this version, one dependency has been added. You don't need to tell name, name right? Name could be anything, yes. but with this combination, only one asset will be there. Okay. Okay. Let's go to our root RAML file now. Now here, I can go ahead and say, okay, now see one more, Okay, I didn't tell you that. Okay, now see here, we are able to see that asset, the fragment yes. which we have added. Now from here, you can remove. Now go to files. Now one more folder got created here that is called exchange underscore modules. Hmm. Now in exchange underscore modules, see properly hierarchy, the group ID, the asset ID and version and the name of the asset. Yep. Now go ahead here, there are th three vertical dots. 
you can copy this path. This is one way of adding it. Directly go and paste it here. Uh -huh. I can go ahead and say paste it. Okay, error is gone. Or you can manually go here and say, okay, go to exchange modules. Okay, then inside that, go to asset ID, uh, group ID, then one by one, then version, then this one. There's one way or directly you can copy the path from here as I shown. Yep. Clear? Can we, can we drag and drop or not? No, no, we cannot drag and drop. If you drag and drop, see, there is no option. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So e one more thing in the last class, I think this part we missed it. Okay. So let me recall. What we have done, we have passed the variables values and on which resource you are applying your resource type based on that we pass the values, right? Since we have applied on accounts, we pass account specific uh, uh, references here, right? And yeah. I said, okay, my post body will be telling, we will be sending me a multiple accounts for the creation. That's the reason I said array object. Okay. Otherwise I could have sent single object. Now, how the examples of my account.json looks like, I have modified it. See, it was little complex, now very simple. Now, this will be my one account, and this will be a second account. In real scenario, you may get multiple accounts, but the structure of the data will be like this only. It will be like this. Yeah. You cannot change while in, in runtime, you cannot change the structure of the data because we are implemented based on this specification. Right, so that specification and implementation match. Clear? Yes. Okay. Now that's how. Now what we can do? We can even go to our bank resources here, and instead of instead of adding this stuff over here, right? This customer and our accounts over here, we can go ahead and there you can add it. But let it be here. Okay. Okay, so now I said I'll be interested in both the methods, get and post. That's the reason for accounts I'm able to see get and post. Now, whatever is there in the resource type, okay, that anyway will get it. But on top of it, so now you see here, this get method doesn't have any query parameter. And I don't want to add any query parameter because this template I'm going to use for any get method. So that doesn't mean that every gate method will have query parameter, right? So here I cannot add the query parameter. You're getting me? The account gate method was having query parameters yes. saying account type branch. Those two query parameters were there. Yes. I cannot add because this is a common stuff. Generic stuff, I'll keep it here in the resource type. Mm -hmm. That you need to keep in mind. Okay, for every requirement, we cannot come to resource type and change because this is getting referred by multiple gate methods. Clear? So where I can change, what? I can go and I can append something on top of that get method. So I need to tell inside a get method, whatever is there, give me that. Plus, I want this query parameter, account type. Plus, it is appended. It's not getting overridden, okay? It's getting mm -hmm. appended to the stuff which is coming from resource types. So that template will get applied. Now, if you go to my customer here, get method will have only, I mean, this get and get method will have account type as a query parameter, but this get method will have zero query parameter. If you go to get method here and cross check only security scheme is applied. But if you go to the get method of account, below account, if you go to the get method, you'll see. Query parameter, account type. Clear? See, the same template is getting used by both the resources, but their gate methods are getting, you know, we can say two flavors we are getting. So we can append on top of it. So this is in a root uh, RAML file, right? Yeah, yes, we are adding in root RAML file. Wherever you are using this template, mm -hmm. after that, you need to add your extra stuff because that is what the specific to that gate method. 
right got it now here if i want to add something for my customer for example for customer i wanted to tell let's say yes there is a get method here so i need to add that get method for which method you want to add get method okay and what do you want to add i want to add so i want a customer from some city and i cannot give e number here now right because city i cannot say and i can give example okay so if you want you can give example i will say my city okay uh -huh. so just example i give now if i go to my get method of customer you will be able to see query parameter now see city and there is an example clear now yes now what we, we have we don't seen need now, to pass here uh, we don't need to pass here like string or anything right no no we I need to pass see by default it is a string only right i didn't add yes. that but definitely you need to pass okay so type is yeah. equal to string, string required is equal to true okay and if you want uh, to and we in this uh, scenario i think required is not equal to true right yes so uh, that's you false. Need to say false false you got it yes very so clear now we, we might need to fetch uh all, all the all the customers all the yep yeah, all the customers right okay that's fine. Yeah. yeah so you got a pro point now we can append stuff we can refer something from outside of our api specification mm -hmm. clear yes now this is the this is the final version of your api specification how look look, look at this now how many lines are there yes. hardly 50 lines 50 lines and how beautifully we are keeping it in the logically grouped Logistic folders structure. okay now save everything okay now what i am going to do now i am going to validate this whatever i have written is this following my standards or not is this following the mulesoft provided rule set or not rules or not okay where is the option okay let's go ahead now and apply those but before that let's test our specification first okay so i'll go to my right option so we are we are saying you know give me customer and i'll pass some header over here because without header passing header i cannot send this request so i got a proper response so get method of my customer is working fine post method of my customer let's look at this so what kind of information i'm passing i'm passing this you customer information so i am saying create this okay but it's asking me token now see customer is created successful but not really it's all mock data right so it's working perfectly fine so far so if i'm going to create the account now see have a look at account now i have two records these records i'll be creating and let me say try it so finally i'll be passing a token i'll be triggering with this body this post method on the accounts so I'm expecting output in JSON format where message will be there, account created successfully and status code will be 201. If there is any error, then 400, 404, 500, 401, all those errors I'll be expecting. Clear? So this is how you'll be. Once you're confident here, then only go ahead and publish it. But right now, one more step is pending. We are going to apply now rule sets. So let's go ahead. Everything looks fine, but I wanted to verify. Okay, so let's go ahead and say add a rule set. Go ahead and add a rule set now. So what kind of rule set you wanted to apply? So first, let's go ahead and apply a required example. For example. Okay. Yes, let's go ahead and add it. One by one, we'll go ahead and do. Check. Okay. Or you can add in one shot. Okay, no problem. Just wanted to show you once. Yep, yep, definitely. Now, okay. see, there are no errors in the project. Okay, let's try to remove one thing and see. So we cannot remove because uh, if you if you remember right this thing you cannot remove so let's go ahead and say remove this part and see what happens control yeah one error is there right required example always include example parameter which error is showing see in the security scheme see have a look at it 
If you go to security scheme, see, here I didn't mention any example. Have a look at it. Mm -hmm. So now everything, it was not, it was not showing any error, right? Till the point, right? Till the point when I applied this security scheme, till mm -hmm. that point, it was no error. Now here, I need to say what will be your example, how the example look like, right? If I go here, example, and in example, I'll say a uh, string and something, okay? Now see, error is gone. See, there are no conformance error, only functional error are there. So two categories now coming. So if I remove this example, see, conformance error will come. See, this conformance error is coming from my rule set. Got it. Am I clear now, Kunal? Yes. Yes. See. Now we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and try to access one more rule set. Okay. We'll, we'll go ahead and we'll, this is, this is important to apply in any point, best practices. Let's see what this guy says. Okay. And then we'll try to apply this also together. So now all the rule sets are applied for REST API. This is not for REST API. This is not for REST API. This is not for REST API. Okay. So required example, we already applied. Now we're applying HTTPS enforcement and best practices. Let's see what happens. So now you think about it, Kunal, right? During design time itself, I could see that probable errors, right? which yeah. can be missed during development time. I, simply I missed one thing, right? Mm. Correct. Yeah. Now, if I send this to my reviewer, he will say, boss, hey, you missed these things over here, right? Now look at these uh, warnings. Okay, so the conformance errors are 55. Where are mm. What error is this? Content type. Any point based for the response, use content type header. use schemas for our data types in the specification see how many how many things are getting applied right let's see there are 55 we cannot fix all those 55 right now but you got the idea right yes we cannot go ahead and fix those all 55 i even i don't want right now okay i got it okay but this is how we'll be fixing it okay now one I one fix I showed you. Okay, so let's see if you I'm not able to see all our warnings. I don't see any error. Okay. All our warnings. Where is the error? I don't see any error. We'll focus on error. Okay. So information, the file is not reference. That's fine. Any error? No. There are no errors. Okay. So we can go ahead with this. Okay. Okay. All our warnings. Okay. Yes. All, all are like the, provide the description for the properties. Yes. Okay. So yes, what yes. I'll do, I'll go ahead and I'll remove this. Okay. This part. So I removed one rule sets. Okay. Now I have only one this. Okay. So all errors will be gone. Okay, now see, everything is gone. Now, if I go to my root ramel file and I am getting error. What is this error? Only use HTTPS protocol scheme. Okay, only HTTPS. Remove this. Now, what error we are getting? Okay, see. The moment I removed HTTP, everything is fixed. Got it. Clear? Yep. Yeah. Now, if you if you go ahead and you know you'll be adding here base URI. Okay. So base URI is something that is implementation URI. You'll be going here and if you say HTTP colon slash slash, and if you say local uh, host just for for understanding, we're adding colon 8081 slash API. Okay. If I add this URL, I get an error. 
okay my rule set is getting compiled now it's validating my specification and it will throw error okay in a moment because base uri can't be http okay it's taking time come on come on come on come on come on why it is not showing here it's showing somewhere See, always use HTTPS URLs. So there are some UI bugs still because see, it's supposed to show here, right? Correct. But here yeah. somewhere red line is coming and see top oh. level element describing HTTP API. HTTPS enforcement always use HTTPS URL. Now the moment I change this to, if you go back here, HTTPS, yes. the error will be gone. Okay. See, error is gone. Clear? Everything is clear? Yes. Okay. Now, if you if you see one more thing, I'll, I'll talk about it. Okay. So, when we apply, if you go to a data type and we are saying properties, right? So, if I say first name, last name, age, address, and phone number. Okay. So how RAML validate this schema based on these properties, whether these properties are there or not in my in incoming request. So first name has to be there. Okay. Last name has to be there. Age and these properties, these properties has to be there, these properties. But if I pass more properties other than this, it won't throw any error. So other than these properties, first name, last name, age, address, and phone. If I add one more property over there, it won't throw any error. Okay. To avoid that, we have something called, if you go here, we need to tell boss. Okay. We need to tell additional. Okay. It's supposed to come. Some of this additional additional properties colon true. If it is true, that means you can add additional properties. And it will if it is fine. false, means you cannot add. Okay. And this has to be always why? What happened? Unresolved reference. Just a second. Huh? Mm -hmm. Additional properties. In panel. I learned this recently. Okay. That's what I'm sharing with you. I was working for one client. And let me share with you. Okay, so there is the option over here. See. Okay, so under type, we need to tell. So I need to say properties and then give a name and additional properties is equal to false. Okay, and then hope you got it right. Yes, false or true. Uh, as you want to add the properties, we need to say true, right? We don't need to write it basically. Okay. By default, it's a true. Okay. So the required is okay. by default is true. We don't need to write it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you, if you don't write it, that means additional properties, you can add it. That's what I was, I was trying to show you. Right. So that your schema will get validated. If you have all the properties. If you miss any property from here, it will throw error. But if you add any extra property, it won't throw error. So for, to avoid that, to validate that part also, we need to say additional properties colon false. We need to tell this. Okay. So I can go ahead and I can, you know, go ahead and say this and my, my here. So I say here it's types control V. So what we'll say properties 
indentation issue type additional properties hope this is inside no at the that level okay and then this part has to be this part has to be one tab inside yeah uh, more than that not only one tab it has to go inside 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 but still it's saying that false unresolved syntax error syntax error in the following text Control X, this name has to be here. My object, Control V, that is a custom. Always this indentation. Shift tab. Is there any other tool uh, that uh, I think you said in VS Code it will be no no, no design center only VS Code it's for the development okay so I'll go back for now we'll go back and but I'll I'll try to see whether it's working with library or not okay because it looks like it's growing problem for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now you got the right. So that extra thing we need to add it here. Additional properties is equal to false. Okay. Okay. Uh, you said we removed uh, it from library, right? We are just, we are not using library. No, for customer data type, we are using library. For okay. account data type, we are using data type. Okay. Okay. So if you go to design center back, Let's go to design center back. And uh, if I go to account data type, no, oh, it should work there also. Okay. So if I open my data type, okay, the properties I said, right? Now, if you go inside and now see, I am getting option additional property. See here that I was checking over there. So I can go ahead here. Now I'm not getting that additional property. So it has to be, if I go down here, see additional properties equal to false. It's working here. I was trying in the library, okay? So in library, if I go ahead, add the types level, okay? I'll go see, you got my point, right? Clear here? Yes. Okay, so now, other than these properties, I cannot go ahead and add any extra property. Unwanted data, I don't want. Really, right? If, if this is the property okay. I'm expecting, if somebody passed any extra property, what could be that property? That could be a SQL injection. That could be a XML threat, right? He's okay. trying to pass extra that will get executed on your server. So that you want to avoid, correct? So this unnecessary extra threat you can avoid by simply writing additional properties equal to false. It's perfectly working fine here. Let me go back again. So I just wanted to fix my stuff. So I'll go to my So if you go here at the not uh, data type. Okay, so after types at this level, if I say control V, still 
okay something is wrong inside the inside library okay clearly see it some something somewhere it's not working see here also it's not working yeah okay so i need to place it here clear kunal is clear now sorry i was on mute yep yep so it's under uh, customer type you yeah to... so once your object okay. any any type yeah yep. below that you need to pass this is your object name okay yep yep yep, yep, yep. right this is your object name under that we are passing it the same thing you can go ahead and apply for for uh, other data types also here so under phone type we can say that hey you pass only only phone number and phone type don't pass anything extra if your address type go here and do the same thing okay hope that is clear now okay so this is how uh we 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 covered all the best we, we, that 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 means we need to pass it at the object level it, yes. it cannot be uh yeah for object the library after that yes okay so below customer type i have passed that property and it's working fine under properties i should not pass or above the object name i should not pass okay mm -hmm. okay so as per our discussion we have written the specification for our requirement that is bank requirement and we have applied the best practices we have applied the rule sets we have tried applying it the the uh, you know whatever best practices are required okay naming conventions we have used and this is the this is a complete specification for your api now okay we have tested in the mocking service here itself okay and now we are going to publish it so directly you can publish it from here or you can go ahead first download it okay so that it is a trial account after 30 days it's going to expire so better you keep this copy download it okay download on your system i'll just go ahead and download on my my folder i'll i'll upload it for the reference okay okay it. i'll just say update it if yeah. we have not downloaded we if we have not downloaded how can we get uh, that um, is there any way to get that so you need to yeah you need to connect then that account okay you won't be able to deploy anything you won't be upload anything but you can still get that from there okay 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 from your old account because this exchange is this exchange belongs to only this account okay once you are done with this account after 30 days it will get expired okay so now we have two options publish it from here this is the publish option or directly we have given publish option here also okay so both the options are available now prepare preparing for publish so if you remember i'll go ahead and i'll remove that unreferenced file i'll say cancel I was having one unreferenced file, right? So this header trait, I'm not going to use it. So I'll just say delete for now. I don't want anything extra other than my requirement. Okay. So publish. So when it's publishing to exchange, behind the scene, it does a lot of things. Okay. So I'll I'll tell you what all lot of things means. So it's actually creating the metadata for our AP specification that metadata will get so it will retry all the metadata okay and that metadata will get pushed to exchange and on exchange that metadata will be used for documentation one point second point it will create a connector for our api and those are rest connectors third point it will convert our raml into os and that copy also will be created for us out of the box these three things are very important that's the reason it was taking it was saying i am i am you know making this document ready for publishing to the exchange right so those three things behind the scene was was getting created or getting ready for us first thing is retry all the metadata 
second thing is generate a rest connector for this api third thing is convert or create an equivalent copy of open api specification for our document clear three things okay now i need to decide for which version so first time we are doing so we'll go ahead and we'll we'll talk, we'll, we'll upload with 1.0.0 an api version so we'll be using a nomenclature right v1 so small v and then version of this so we'll discuss this let's give me you know clear picture what is this naming you know a numbering version numbering okay <coughs> So that numbering is nothing but oh, uh, uh, but meanwhile, what I'll do, I'll just say publish it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it will be getting published and then we'll discuss this. So we are we are okay with publishing it that stable. Okay. So let's publish it. We'll take some time to publish. Okay. Now, if you if you notice this, this numbering is always with three digit, right? So it will be first one is major main major, major okay second one is minor third one is patch this is how the versioning will be all of that so you'll see that 1.0.0 .0, 2.0.0 .0, 1.0.0 .0, 1.0.0 .0, 1.0.0 one okay so we'll discuss all these things when you when when i should go with this when i should go with this when i should go with this and when i should when i when i should go with this clear yep this this versioning or this pattern we call it semantic versioning okay So semantic, you know, same man, same, it will be same semantic. word dot org. If you go read about this. Okay. okay. Now, mm -hmm. now initially we'll start with 1.0. So whatever the first stable version, that is your 1.0. So now in this 1.0, so let's say you have account resource. Under that, you have get method and post method. Two things are there. Okay. Under get method, you have, you don't have anything right now. Under post method, you don't have anything. Just you're passing a body. Clear with this 1.0. This. Now, when should I go with this? 2.0. 2.0 is nothing but you're changing a major. So that means in your API, so this is 1.0. API, what you did, you actually went either you delete this get method. So what happened? You went ahead and you deleted that get method. This is a major change. That means whoever was using 1.0.0. If you simply upgrade API to 2.0.0 means it's their code will start breaking. They will get, they'll be getting error if they are using get method. So if your code is not backward compatible, okay, if the code is not backward compatible, you need to go ahead and update your major version. If you need code change after upgrading the version, then you should go with this major version. You got my point? Yep. If the code, the 2.0.0 is not backward compatible with the 1.0.0. So when you should consider this versioning as a 2.0, when your code is not backward compatible, when your code needs a code changes for a client, then you should go with the major. Now, the moment you change major, the API version will become V2 instead of V1. Okay, you need to keep this in mind. Now, when should I go with this 1.1.0 from here? Now, 1.0.0 means, so from here, I'll come, I have account resource. 
here gate method was there that is intact here post method is there that is intact no change you have added delete method you added new method now there is no change in gate method there is no change in post method this is a new method you added new functionality you added now if somebody is moving from 1.0 to 1.1.0 whether they need to change the code from the client side? No, because if they are using get method, still that will, that will work. If they are using post method, still that will work without any code change, without any error. This is called minor change. If they want to use a delete method, go ahead and delete, use it. But we are not forcing them. We are saying I have added additional functionality. Your code, whatever you're using, that is not going to get, you know, break. If they want to use a delete, they will come to 1.0.1.1.0. Am I clear? New functionality, but still your code is backward compatible. Clear? Yep. Now, my bad, it should be 1.0.1. .1. Okay, so from 1.0.1, when I should go, okay? So you have account resource again, you have get method, you have post method. Adding some. So you are adding okay. some description here. Yeah. You are adding some uh, documentation. Mm -hmm. That is called patching. So you are doing patching. That is one thing. Okay. If there was a bug in get method. You are fixing that bug. Then it will be 1.1. .1. Okay. So you need to be very careful when you are fixing it. You are not adding any new functionality. You are not adding any. Uh, you are not. You are not making your code. You know. You are not making that code. Uh, you know. Uh, in a such a way that it's not backward compatible. If you are not doing that, only fixing some logical logical uh, uh, issue okay then go ahead with patching it will be 1.0.1 it could be 1.1.0 1 .1 also i told you right if it is yes. if it is new functionality altogether you are adding it as part of bug fix or you are making backward incompatible then you need to go with the major right you need to check what kind of things you are doing it as part of bug fix what you are doing actually so that's the reason i mentioned if it is a description change or simple bug fix where you are fixing you know instead of using uh, you know uh, uh, some specific method now you are changing that method to some other method right so if you are okay. doing that then go ahead and use the patch version so from 1.0.0, it will come back to 1.0.1. .1. Now this is how you, you should use this versioning. Clear? Yes. So that's what we did. So we have published our content. Any questions so far, Kunal? Do you feel anything is missing over here? No. Not okay. Right. So now this is published. Let's go ahead and look at our exchange, how it looks. Now see these two assets, we have published it, correct? Yes. This is a fragment. This is a REST API specification. Let's open it. So whatever we see in the, in the, in the design center, correct? See what we have, we have published via stable okay right now not validated because we have not applied any api governance on top of it okay we can view the code from here it will take you to design center now first let me talk about this download option now i talked about two things remember one mm -hmm. it created mule for connector this is a rest connector for us in upcoming sessions, we'll use this REST connector to invoke this API. Okay. 
when okay. you'll be discussing consuming rest apis that time we'll we'll use this option to invoke our bank api okay second thing i said it it will it will generate equivalent os document for us let me download this document for you okay and how it looks so it's already there i'll just open it i'll just cancel and i'll open it okay so already downloaded for So we'll get a zip file. Once we unzip that file, we'll be able to see a api.json file and you can see swagger 2.0. This is the info. Schemas will be there. Now we are removed, right? So let me let me download the latest one. Okay. So I thought I have the latest, but let me download. I can show you the latest actual. Okay, so. Hope you are able to see my screen. Showing the folder. Yes, I am able to. Okay. So just now we have downloaded it. It was there already on my system. Let's extract. Okay. See, as I mentioned, API.json will be there. And now see <clears throat> swagger. 2.0, the information about your asset. Okay, so description, version, schemes, then paths. See here, accounts. This is your open API specification document. But if you remember, now you get only one file. Whatever fragmentation we did, whatever logical grouping we did, that stuff is gone. Now you'll get only one JSON file. Everything will be there embedded in this file. Have a look at it. Everything is embedded over here. Whether you created resource type, whether you created schemes, whether you created trades, everything is gone. Clear? This is monolithic file, you'll get it. Just like we started initially to creating a monolithic file, right? Everything in, in the same mm -hmm. file. Same thing happened with this OS. No fragmentation applicable over here. Clear? Okay. Yeah. Now let's look at this little, this UI is new UI. If you want to go back to the previous UI, you can still go ahead and have a look at our old UI. This was like this. Okay. So left hand side, mm -hmm. you'll see all the endpoints. So we have accounts. Under accounts, we have two methods. If you open get method, see, this is this is the documentation created for us by using that metadata. How will get it? By looking at this documentation, any consumer will see that, okay, what is the query parameter required? See, account type. What are the possible values I can pass? Saving, current, loan. Okay, what is the security is, is there? I need to pass authorization, which is required. See, example I have passed, right? Remember? Mm -hmm. Yes. What are codes are, error codes are, or uh, written codes are, STDP codes are supported by this API. Now on exchange also, I will get an API portal. This is called API portal. Okay, API console. See here. Now I can go ahead and test it here. Send. I'll be able to get this output properly. See here. Now, whoever mm -hmm. wants to consume this, okay, they'll be able to see. What is this? Okay. They'll be able to test your endpoints, all the methods, and then they will decide whether to use this API or not. So, this documentation will help you a lot. Okay. Now, right now, if you see, 
this api is private right now okay yes now let's go back to the new ui and try to understand this also so now we are getting this table okay stable development and deprecated option okay so deprecated option is nothing but you want to stop supporting that api and after some time you want to delete that api so first you need to go to deprecated status and then finally delete status so once you deprecate it nobody can request for access the moment you deprecate it for that particular version nobody able to put new access request we'll talk about it's not validated it is related to the api governance okay um hmm. the downloaded Go one uh, how can how can we use the downloaded one downloaded one what do you mean so by you say you say that uh, we need to download uh, the functionality first right uh, when we are, we are going to publish you download it first no no for the i i download it for future reference that ramen okay you can go to yes. any point studio we have seen right in any point studio you have option to import the local ramen okay during so that time we... you can use that okay or in future in future if you want to uh, look at that project ramal project what i i created you can go ahead here and publish it in the exchange there is option to publish new asset the old ramal you which you have downloaded right you can go ahead here give the asset name here type you can go ahead and say rest api upload ramal you can upload the zip file here that zip file which is getting downloaded right okay you can go ahead and see from here you can upload it so that ramal file will be used for future reference or creating a project you can use a local ramal you can use a design center ramal or you can use a exchange ramal three options are there while creating a new project okay so um mm -hmm. the outside uh, people don't mm -hmm. get that ramal right they will get yeah you download it you can share that with or if you want to share it from your platform i am going to show you that no let's see if mm. in exchange we have multiple like uh, apis for okay. that apis uh, we cannot download that ramal file right we can we can download it see here so just now i showed you right so for example there is a download option ramal download ramal this ramal you will get a zip file any api if you have access you can go ahead and download it from here okay from the exchange okay and keep it locally for you in future you can use it if you want to see okay. the view if you want to see the view, code of your ramal see it will take you to the design center with this business group id with this asset id and with this version it never uses a name okay always use uses hmm. the yeah and see it will show you the your code this was the code remember yes okay now third option we have we have seen view code we have seen download we now there is option called yeah. sharing and when i showed the api fragment this public option was not there remember hmm. yes so only api specification you can share with your public okay so now if i go to my whiteboard now your any point platform is here right your exchange has two things so i'll just say directly your any point platform and this is your exchange any point exchange okay so this any point action has two portals portal which is private portal which is public now this public portal 
anybody can see. Don't need to log in anybody from public internet. Public internet, anybody can see. They don't need to log in. They don't, don't need any credentials, nothing. But this private, whoever has any point platform credentials, only those guys can see. Any point platform only. Clear? Okay. So now whatever we are seeing right now, right? This exchange. This is, this exchange needs a login credentials, but these credentials here, see public portal. This is a public portal of my account. If I give this to you, even you'll be able to see, just go ahead and try to hit this. You don't need any credentials for this. Okay. Right now it's completely empty. If I go ahead go to my asset and I say share. If I say I want to share it publicly, go ahead and say public save. Now, can you refresh your page, please? If you are, if you are looking at that, I didn't refresh my page. This, this was the initial state of my public portal. Kunal, are you able to see our new yes, asset? Yes, yes, see? yes. If I refresh it now, okay. I'll be able to see this. Now, anybody from outside, they can look at my public APA portal. They can come here. They can test this. See, same behavior, they will get it. No change. They will also get the portal. They will also get APA console. This is APA console where we can test our APIs. I can go ahead and test it. See here. Right now, it's running via mocking service. We have not implemented it. With the help of mocking service itself, outside people. Now this URL, if I give this URL, okay, this URL till now it was not public. Now, since now it is public, I can go ahead, copy this URL, copy this URL, go to your postman. If you have postman, go to your postman Kunal, open your postman. Okay. And now in postman, I can go ahead. Now let's try to trigger this URL. We fix one by one error. Okay. We'll fix it. Now what it says, it's a bad request. It's saying that required authorization is missing. So that means what it's, it's expecting header, right? And what is the name of that header parameter? Remember authorization. Now I'll pass one, two, three, four value. I told you we have not implemented it unless you implement, unless you apply the policy, this token value never get validated, but it will ask you to send the value. Now see one error I'm fixing now. So if you remember now, there are a lot of things are missing over here, but which one is getting first? asked first is asking for security scheme value so this authorization was getting checked first now if you remember query parameter is missing right now second thing see i passed the the authorization now now it is asking for account type now second thing is asking for account type query parameter now i'll go ahead and I'll pass account type control c I'll say control V. And if you remember, I, I intentionally pass small s saving to mm. show you that this is case sensitive. See here, what it says, error validating parameter saving is not from enum value. So if mm. I go ahead and make it capital S, now this will work. See here. Clear, Kunal? Yes, yes. Now, don't you think this URL is working like a proper API? This URL, whatever I am showing you right now, mm. it works like perfect, perfect implementation URL, right? Yep. Correct? 
in mm-hmm. actual scenario what will happen instead of two records i'll be getting more records more records yeah but the pattern will be same it will be array mm-hmm. it will be a uh, it will be a uh, json objects inside it so can i share this url with my other developers without implementation they can consume this api via this mocking service they can continue with their development this is called parallel development right they don't need to wait till my implementation are you getting me this is called parallelism parallel development other developers will start using this url and they can parameterize when my actual url comes only they need to replace that actual url that's it implementation url hmm. clear yep complete documentation is available on my exchange now this is the url they can use in their development they know how to pass this account type what values are expecting what header i supposed to pass everything is there clear mm-hmm. yep now if you if you go to the post method okay let's go at the post method now if you try to send this same control a control c in the body okay so we'll go ahead here uh raw json json go here and send the body okay in the url i don't need query parameters now right simply i'm going to create okay. send perfect account created successfully let's try and add one more field here okay so let's say uh what i'll say mm-hmm. On the branch okay which was not there i'm adding it and i just see string i'm passing one extra oh. extra value still it is created i have applied on data type strange okay I should throw error right yeah so let's see our code yeah okay so what happens i'll tell you okay so we updated our not this one clearly i'll tell you the what what is the issue so if you remember we made the change but we didn't publish it this data type and we are still using the old one and old one has the this property was not there so what i'll do i'll publish it okay or even even not this one we have applied on actually customer i show you the customer one don't get confused okay hmm. since that that was not applied uh, the new changes are not applied still we are using if you remember still we are referring if you see uh, my api specification we are using the copy of account data type 1.0.0 but in 1.0.0 we have made a change i have added additional property to be we didn't publish it and we didn't update here but one thing we did it here we did it for customer okay and now we'll see when i when i send the customer whether it's working or not okay so if you if you go to the dependencies see we are still using 1.0.0 okay and in exchange 1.0.0 doesn't have additional property is equal to false i hope you got the pro- problem yep, okay yep, yep. i got it. now let's let's go ahead and try the customer one so uh, before that i trigger the get method so that i get the output so i got this right 
Now what I'll do, I'll copy this, control A, control C. We'll change this method to post method. We'll go to body, control A, control V, okay? First we'll trigger this, it should work. Customer created successfully. Now in phone number, we'll try to add one property called, uh, oh. what do you want? Okay. Home number. Uh, no, we'll say status here, okay? Something I just wanted to add status, which is <clears throat> okay. So I say disabled or not working, whatever. Okay. Now let's try and see. Are you able to see? See invalid schema, clear message. See, status is not permitted. Did I write any code for this? Mm -hmm. Any custom code? No. By writing that one property, I'm able to clearly see the consumer or client will be able to clearly see that, okay, this method, this parameter is not permitted. I removed it, it will work. Clear? Got it. Yeah. Okay. So, we are able to test it from our exchange and that's all from our our design phase this is the proper document or output of this design phase mm -hmm. now other developers are able to use this so we are achieving parallel development okay the outside people public right they have public access to this api they are able to see documentation of my api you can go at any time okay you can add a you know uh, go to summary here uh, space. go to page to your page and you can add the documentation prop proper documentation for your API. How many methods are there? How many resources are there? What kind of security you applied? Okay. You, all the specific documentation you can add it over here so that you'll give meaningful information about your APIs. Right now, with the help of metadata, your document is just created already. Okay then you can go ahead and add your own documentation. So for example, okay. if I wanted to show you some documentation, right? Provided a MuSoft, okay? You open any documentation, any, uh, I'll just show REST APIs, open any, okay? And you'll see that, see, this is the documentation I'm talking about. They have added some links over here. They added some, some information about uh, the API. This type of documentation you can add it, okay? Clear? Yep. Uh, but the link you have shared with me and I'm seeing that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not able to uh, like download or anything like that. That is public. Yeah. Okay. That is public. This one you're talking about? Yes. The download option is there? Uh, not for me. Okay. So that is that is not okay. I, I, I think I'm not able to see it from my... Can I share my screen so you will be able to see that? Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. So that's all. Let me stop the recording.